Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today we're gonna be doing more of a laid back, hangout style, get ready with me video. As most of you know at this point, I've gone through a lot of life changes over the past year or so. I left my corporate job to pursue content creation full time. I went through a breakup and the loss of a puppy, and most recently I moved from Minnesota to Chicago. So because of that, you guys have been asking me so many questions just about my life and for personal updates. So I thought the easiest way to address all of those questions would be to just film a life update while I'm applying some skincare and makeup and just hang out with you guys. So depending on the time of day, grab yourself a cup of coffee, a sparkling water, a glass of wine, and get comfortable because we're gonna get really personal and deep here today, if you will, while I am getting ready. Before we jump into that, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell, and drop a comment below letting me know how you're doing today. How are you feeling? Good? I hope so. And if you need anything from me at all, it'll be listed in my description box below including all of the products that I'll be using today. I'm not gonna talk through them because this video would be five years long. So everything I use will be listed below along with my Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my SPF merch, timestamps for the topics that I'll be talking about, discount codes, and links to my favorite products of all time. All right, let's jump into it. Let's just start off with the hottest topic of the moment, which is my apartment nightmare, if you will. So. If you watch my moving vlog, then you already know that I moved into a mess of an apartment situation. It was filthy, filthy, so dirty. There were a lot of personal items left behind in the cabinets and cupboards from the previous tenants and every single appliance in the apartment was broken. No exaggeration, literally every single one. <laughs> yeah, so it has been a process to get everything deep cleaned and fixed or replaced. We've had to just completely replace a lot of items. I shouldn't say we, I'm not the one paying for it, but there's been a lot going on. So that whole mess was like the initial move-in experience. And I was like, okay, we're good. Now that these kinks have kind of been worked out, everything's gonna be fine. Everything has not been fine. I have been keeping you guys updated a little bit over on my Instagram stories because there have been some cute, fun, exciting things that have happened since my move-in. So I'll do a little mini story time for the first one because I just don't even know how else to explain this. Also, I have these like dry patches of skin on my chin right now. I don't know what's going on. So one day I was taking a shower and I heard this pounding noise. And at first I was like, okay, whoever is knocking on my neighbor's door needs to calm down. Then my heart fell out of my because I realized that the pounding was coming from my door and someone was pounding on my door very aggressively and it kept getting louder and faster. And I'm in the shower in an apartment by myself. So I'm like, I'm not about to get out of the shower and answer the door with a towel on and wet hair, not happening. So instead I'm just gonna stand here and hope it stops, which it did eventually. So I was like, okay, I have no idea what that was. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. A few hours later, the pounding on the door starts again. So I look through the people and I'm like, oh, it's a couple maintenance men from my building. So I felt comfortable to open the door, obviously, because I have been working with them on all of the issues of my apartment. And they're like, have you showered today? I was like, that's an oddly personal question to ask a single girl living in an apartment alone. So I'm kind of just looking at them weird. Like, what do you even say to people that ask you that? <laughs> And they point at the floor and they're like, because your shower is leaking. What is in my eye? And I look at the floor and there is this really large puddle of water basically in the hallway right next to the wall of my unit. So I'm like, well, that is clearly not good, but also what do you want me to do about it? And you cannot make this up. One of the maintenance men looks me in the eyes and goes, well, the next time you shower, just don't get water on the side of the shower. I'm sorry, how on earth do you expect me to control the direction of the stream of water from a shower? Try again, what else can we do here? Cause that's not the solution. So eventually they did come back to reseal the shower. Don't ask me details on that. Believe it or not, I am 0% handy. So I don't know how that works, but somehow it did work and it hasn't been an issue since. Thank God, because I thought they were gonna have me leave like move out of the apartment because that couldn't be used like i just was worried i was gonna get kicked out not because i did something wrong but because 
that was like not usable basically. So that was stressful, but just a little blip in the road. But that's definitely not the best part. The grand finale is my door. So when I first moved in, I noticed that the door knob, like not the actual knob itself, but what was surrounding it to attach the knob to the door, was loose. Like it wasn't fully flush and sealed with the door. So I was like, mm, doesn't look great. But at the same time, I wasn't having any issues with it locking. It works just fine. So I was like, okay, I guess I just have a loose sketchy door handle will survive. Then one day I went to take the recycling out and I was coming back into my apartment and the door would not unlock. So I'm standing in the hallway in PJ's slippers, nothing on me besides my apartment keys. So I didn't have my phone and I'm locked out of my apartment, but I'm holding the keys. So it's not like I forgot my keys inside. The keys are not unlocking the door. So I'm like, <laughs> like jiggling the door handle and it would not budge. So I was standing there trying to get it to open. It felt like I was there for 30 minutes, but it probably was like three minutes, let's be honest. But that is such a stressful feeling, not having any way to reach anybody if you need to. Oh my gosh. So I eventually got the door to open. I gave it like a really aggressive shove. Thank God it unlocked and opened. But when that happened, the door also completely broke. Ooh. Keep in mind at that time, it was Friday afternoon. So I'm starting to realize I only have a few hours to get this thing fixed before it's the weekend and I'm stranded in an apartment that doesn't lock basically, which is completely unsafe and I wouldn't have been able to stay there. So I call maintenance, he's screaming at me like, we don't fix doors. You have to figure this out with your landlord. He's gonna have to get you a new door. I call my landlord, he's like, no, I don't do this. That's what maintenance is for. They're gonna fix it for you. I'm like, can someone just give me an answer? I'm weirdly stuck in the middle of this, but there's nothing that I can do. So I just need a door that locks so I can sleep here safely. So maintenance comes and looks at it and they're like, yep, sorry, we can't repair this. It's shot basically. You need a new door, but these doors are not just standard doors. Like they have to be specially ordered for like fire code purposes. I don't freaking know how that works, but they're like, it's gonna probably take over a month to get here. <sighs> so I'm like, what would you like me to do in the meantime? So uh, it's then Friday night. It did not get figured out in time. And I'm basically left hanging for the foreseeable future with a door that doesn't lock. So I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I'm fine. I'm just going to set up like a little fortress blocking the door so that if someone tries to break in, they won't be able to get in. It'll be okay. Because this also wasn't the type of thing that was, I don't know, hidden from the public. That was a weird way to say that. It wasn't something that you would walk by and not notice. It wasn't discreet. It was very obvious that the door was broken. So anyone that walked by my apartment door would see that they would be able to literally just open it and walk in if they wanted to, which again is very unsafe. So I slide my dresser over to the door and stack all of the dumbbells that I have in my apartment on top of the dresser. And I'm like, okay, come on, I'm amazing. Look at this, it's just fine. I send a photo to my dad because at that point I had told my parents and my dad was like, please tell me what you do so I can have peace of mind basically. So I sent that photo, I immediately get a call from him and he's like, you what? If someone was strong enough and wanted to get in, they could throw their body into the door. The dresser would just slide over and they'd be able to walk right in. So I'm like, okay, fair, we'll try again. We literally went back and forth probably like three or four separate times with different configurations. Every time I thought that I got it right, I sent him a picture like, okay, we're good. No, nope, I'd get a call from him right after like, Abby, no, that's not good. That's not safe. So finally I got it into this little booby trap, if you will, a configuration that would work that my dad was like, okay, literally no one will be able to get in if they want to. It's fine. You can sleep there for the night. Otherwise, I definitely would have gone to stay with a friend or gone to a hotel or something if it didn't feel secure. So the next day maintenance did come back and fix the door temporarily until I could get a replacement. So it's not like I was left hanging for that full month without a fix that I would have been long gone at that point. Obviously you need a door that locks in an apartment that you're renting. But the best part about it was that my landlord kept texting me like, what did you do to the door? When maintenance was in there earlier to look at your dryer, the door wasn't broken. So what did you do? Like insinuating that I somehow broke that door like that. 
like Hulk smashed it or something. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how strong you think I am, but there is no possible way I could have done that if the door was not already broken. So I was trying to explain that, like the handle looked loose already. There clearly was already an issue. And then something finally just broke. I'm not capable of doing that myself. But he still was like, I just don't understand. Like, did you have a guy there that did that? I was like, no, this was the middle of the day on a Friday. Like everyone else is at work. I'm just working from home in my apartment. I don't know what you think I did to it or whatever. So he was kind of saying that because this was a special door that had to be replaced, it was gonna cost like close to $2,000 to fix. And again, because he was suggesting that I did it, it seemed like he was also suggesting that I was gonna need to pay for that. And I was like, this is where you're gonna lose me. So I went back through all of the footage that I had from my moving blog, like, oh my God, there has to be something that shows that this door was not safe already beforehand and that it was already broken. So thank God I found some footage from when I was unlocking the front door where you can see this large crack above the door handle which clearly shows it was already broken the day that I moved in. So I sent that to him. I'm like, here's my receipts. Shout out to YouTube for saving me like two grand for something that I didn't even do because that was unbelievable. But also I'm like, how about the two nails that are just sticking out of the door? Is that not enough to tell you that this is something that had already been attempted to be fixed at one point. Doors don't just have two nails sticking out like that. It clearly was already broken. Someone tried to patch it up and didn't do a good enough job because it broke again. So <sighs> that was a long story, but so many of you guys were like, please just tell the full apartment story and everything that's been going on. And so many of you have been asking me if I'm going to break my lease, if I'm going to move out, because this has obviously turned into somewhat of a nightmare. So at this point, because everything has been repaired or replaced, I am planning to stay and I'm not planning to break my lease. There are definitely some cosmetic issues, if you will. This building is just a lot older than the building that I lived in in Minnesota in my last apartment, and that's fine. Like, I don't need this to be some beautifully updated apartment. That would be nice, of course, but it would also cost me a lot given the need that I have for so much space living alone. I'm just in a really unique situation, working from home, needing a whole setup to film, a whole place to actually work, like an office space, and I need a lot of room for product storage for all of my videos. So. It's just not your average living situation. I would not be able to live in a one bedroom. So I really love that I have a lot more space here than I did in my last apartment, even though it's not quite as updated. I love that I'm close to the friends that I have here in Chicago and I'm super close to the lake. So when it gets nice out again, I can just walk on over there, go on nice walks along the lakeshore path. So I love all of those things. And aside from the couple of cosmetic issues, Again, now that everything's been replaced, it'll be fine for a year and then I'll reevaluate at that point. Also, moving by yourself is so stressful, so time consuming, so much work. I do not have the capacity to do that again so soon. I was thinking about it and I'm like, I think I'll actually have an emotional breakdown <laughs> if I have to pack everything up again and move again. I just, I can't, I can't do it. I cannot do that to myself. And it's so, so expensive. I swear moving companies get away with highway robbery because even in the same state, it's thousands of dollars to move like that. Don't even talk about interstate moving, which is even more expensive than that, which I obviously just paid for. So mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, it's not something that I want to do again only like a month and a half after I just moved. So we're gonna make it work. I'll definitely do an apartment tour if you guys are interested, but I did just order some new furniture, so I wanna wait for that to come in so that everything is fully settled. So let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a move-in tour of what I am living in when that's ready. This shade is way too dark, oops. So apartment issues aside, a lot of you have been asking me how I am adjusting to Chicago, if I'm loving it, if I'm glad that I moved here, if I'm missing Minnesota, and honestly, the adjustment has not been the best. In retrospect, I moved here at probably the single worst time of year, just 
being so close to the holidays. So when I did move here, I had three weeks to unpack, get settled, deal with everything that was going on in my apartment. And then I was back in Minnesota three weeks later for Christmas. So it just was really, really, really hectic. And that was very stressful. So that was one of the reasons why I felt like I didn't have a ton of time to do things here. But at the same time, everyone was so busy with the holiday season with family and, you know, holiday parties, vacations, travel, everything. So that definitely wasn't ideal, but I was super excited to come back after Christmas. because I was like, okay, this will be like the kickoff that I was hoping for that I didn't really get to have. And then... COVID obviously happened and so many people were getting it. So people were either quarantining because of that or laying low because of that. So there was just a lot less going on. And then here, and then I got COVID of course. So I had to self quarantine completely by myself for over a week. And I thankfully didn't have a super rough go with the actual virus itself. I had a couple days where I didn't feel great. Um, had like the burning chest and cough and was really exhausted. But other than that, it was basically just like a cold for me. The worst part about it for me was just that I was already feeling a little bit isolated post Christmas and just not having this be the start to Chicago that I thought it was going to be. And then that was just like icing on the cake where I literally couldn't see anybody. So when I was finally able to leave my apartment, I went to Target because I needed to get groceries. And that is so overstimulating. If you live alone and you've had to self quarantine because of COVID, going back into public for the first time is like, I forgot what it's like to be around other people. So I just was feeling overwhelmed with life at that point and had myself a nice little meltdown in the Target parking lot. I think it finally just hit me that when I am feeling lonely, I have a much smaller circle here. And if that circle of people, if they're all busy, I'm kind of SOL. I can't just drive home to hang out with my parents for a weekend when all of my friends are busy. I don't have all of the friends that I had in Minnesota here to give me more options to see people if I am feeling lonely. So I think that finally just kind of smacked me in the face and I was like, what am I doing here? It was like an out of body experience. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm here completely by myself. Why did I move? What was I thinking? Oh my God, like just a lot. And that is obviously a really crappy feeling. I do feel like that was a little bit inevitable you know, when you're moving away from where you've basically lived your entire life. I was bound to cry in a Target parking lot at some point, but I was texting one of my best friends, Kim, who does live here, like, just cried in the Target parking lot. Things are cute. And she was like, that's it. We're coming to pick you up. So her and her husband came and picked me up and we went and had a movie night, the three of us together. And I stayed the night there, little slumber party. And it was honestly just what I needed after that. I felt a lot better the next day. And they were even saying like, we feel so bad. This has been such a terrible time to move here because of COVID and everything. We promise it's gonna get better. So, so I know it's going to get better. I'm not worried about that. It just, that was a little bit of a rude awakening. It was not the exciting, fun, amazing start to Chicago that I thought it was going to be. It ended up just being really, really crappy timing with a lot of different things going on. But I feel like that's a good segue because I have been going on some dates, so it's not like I've been completely isolated when my friends here are busy. And a ton of you were asking me about dating, what the scene is like here, and I have to say, no surprise, the hinge market here is so much better than in Minnesota. Obviously, it's a much larger city, so that definitely plays a role, but so many handsome, well-educated men in Chicago. I love that. Being 27, there is definitely a lot of pressure to settle down and get married and have a family and a house. And those are all definitely things that I want for myself at some point in the future. But if I'm being completely honest, I'm not focused on any of those things right now in a major way. I'm not trying to force any of those things to happen. I've obviously been through a lot over the past year. And because of that, it's been so, so, so nice to just solely focus on myself and nothing else. I've never had another time in my life before where I was completely single and living alone. And aside from the couple of moments that I've had here feeling lonely at the start, overall, I am really, really enjoying 
being single and living alone in this kind of phase in my life. So I'm really just embracing the fact that I am loving this phase in my life right now and that's why it would take a lot for me to settle down with somebody. Not because that's not something I want for my future, it's not that I want to be alone forever, it's just that I'm in such a groove right now being by myself. I'm perfectly content being alone. I have always been super independent, so that's definitely part of it. And I know that that's not always easy for everybody, but because of that, I'm like, if you're gonna come disrupt this comfortable life that I'm living right now, you're gonna have to be pretty freaking amazing. I'm not just gonna settle for somebody that doesn't, I don't wanna say check the boxes that I'm looking for, cause it's not like I have a list, but, We'll say that, that doesn't check all of the boxes just for the sake of being in a relationship. I'm not doing that. And I know I'm gonna find the right person for me when the time is right for me. So I'm not stressed about it. I have not found that person yet. So to those of you asking if I have a boyfriend, no. There's been nobody special enough for me to disrupt my life. So I will continue to go on dates and be open to meeting new people. I'm definitely not closed off to it. I'm just not actively looking for it and trying to force it if that makes sense because it's not a top priority for me right now my priorities at the moment are myself my career there's so much that i want to accomplish this year and over the next couple of years with my career so i'm focused on those things and having fun which i feel really lucky to be able to prioritize because i know in a few years when i do have a family i don't Am I gonna have a kid in a few years? I don't know about that. It's hard to say, but at some point, my family will have to be my priority and I won't be able to prioritize myself and having fun in the same way. And that's okay, because obviously having a family is amazing when you got there, but again, I'm just embracing this phase of my life and I'm feeling really, really good about it. So if you guys want me to do an entire video where I talk about being single, breakups, moving on after loss, dating, dating horror stories, let me know. I could definitely do another sit down chit chat video talking all about that because I do get a lot of questions on those topics too, but we need a whole separate video for that because if I dive into that topic today, we'll be here for a few more hours. Speaking of a few hours, I feel like this video has been super long already, so I'm just gonna wrap up my eye makeup quick off camera and then I will jump back on to talk about the last topic, which is whether or not I plan to get another dog. All right, went for blue eyeshadow eyeliner today. I'm still trying to figure out the perfect way to do that to get it to come out really nicely because I feel like it's a little bit more finicky than my typical brown shadow liner. So when I get that down, I can definitely show you guys in a future get ready with me. Okay, am I going to get another dog? This is a loaded question because I would love to have a dog right now, especially now that I have been living alone for a while. It would be so, so nice to have a little built-in bestie with me to snuggle on the couch. I would love it, but I just don't think it's the smartest or most realistic move for me just with where I'm at in my life right now. I obviously did the whole puppy thing, so I know firsthand how exhausting it is to have a puppy, and I know that I could never do that by myself, given how crazy busy I am with work right now. So I am in the process of looking to hire help, an editor, potentially an assistant in the future, and I've thought about hiring help with a puppy so that I could do that, but one of the things that you have to do when you have a puppy or just a dog, of course, when they're full grown is take them out even when the sun's down and they have to go outside to go to the bathroom. And I just don't feel safe taking out a dog at night by myself right now in the city. It's just not something I think is the safest move for me right now. So because of that, as much as I would love to have a dog, I just have decided that I don't think it's something I'm gonna be able to do right now. So I definitely will have a dog at some point in the future, just not right now. But if I'm being honest with myself, I feel like I'm still trying to process the loss of Georgie and move forward from that. I'm obviously in a much better place now than I was several months ago, but that whole experience was so traumatic for me and I don't use that word lightly. It was really, really, really hard for me and as much as I have healed from all of that, it's still something that I get upset about when I talk about it and when I think about it. I can't even scroll backwards in my camera roll because I just have hundreds of videos and photos of her 
from when she was a puppy and that even is still painful for me. So I think just the safety thing, knowing how busy, oh wait, I already took my clips out. I put those in. The safety concern, how busy I am right now and the fact that I think I still just need a little bit more time to move forward from the experience of losing a puppy. All of those things combined equals I'm not quite ready for that with where I'm at. All right, you guys, we covered everything that I wanted to cover in today's video. So we are going to wrap this up here. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on whether or not you would like me to continue to do updates like this. Again, do we want a whole video on dating and being single? I'm definitely down for that. So let me know whatever you would like to see next. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and would like to see more. But thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. Stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.